What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And John, I love the the stories, not just the success stories, but the challenge stories. And I had um, PipeDrive co-founder Ermas on, and he talked about, we talked about PipeDrive, right? But at that point, they had 10,000 paying customers. Now they have, I think, over 100,000 customers. But he talked about having brain surgery, getting married, and moving from Estonia to the U.S., all in the same year. So check out that episode and other episodes. It's just a, a person in a company I just highly respect. Um, this, epi- you know, this episode, other episodes are brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And at Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 partnerships and clients and relationships by helping them run their podcast. So for me, John, over the past, like since 2008, relation in general relationships are the number one thing in my life and i'm always looking a way to give to my best relationships a podcast has been a way for me to profile other thought leaders and companies and give to them and i love learning from them too like yourself so you know we help if you have a question if you're thinking about launching a podcast or you have a podcast and you want to make sure it fits in the overall goals go to rise25.com check out more email us We've worked with companies from a Berkshire Hathaway company to agencies to consultants to SaaS companies, you name it. Um, so check it out. And I'm excited to introduce today's guest. Uh, before I do, big shout out to SEM Rush, who I use for research. And you can run your SEO, PPC, social media marketing, and probably over, you know, John's nodding because he knows it way better than I do with 40 plus advanced tools. Um, and all you have to do is enter in a domain, you know, your competitors, traffic sources, ranking, social media, and John, I want to hear how you've used it. They have over 6 million users. I look up John to see what other links out there should I be checking out as my research. So I find one, getcredo.com, which I'll introduce you in a second, has over 32,000 backlinks. And they, I saw a search engine journal. He was ranked one of the 140 top SEO experts you should be following, which I would never have found otherwise because, you know, there's just a lot of other information you have out there. So John Doherty is the founder and CEO of Credo. You can check out getcredo.com. Credo started in 2013 because John, like I said, a veteran of, of SEO and digital marketer, you know, digital marketer was frustrated because he was seeing his friends and other businesses hire bad marketing agencies. So he created Credo. So top companies meet the best pre-vetted digital marketing providers within a few days and who they can trust to grow their business. They've helped over 4,500 businesses, companies like New York Times, Adobe, Land's End, and so many more. So John, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, thanks for having me. That is quite the introduction. I want you to be my hype man everywhere I go. That Good. was awesome. <laughs> I, I, I would love to be your hype man. And so you, you were nodding when I was saying SEM Rush. You I used was. it. I was. I mean, I wrote a guide on SEM Rush. There was a guide to using <laughs> SEM Rush on Credo. Um, nice. And obviously, I did it. I mean, We're going to have to link that up. Yeah, feel free to. Full disclosure, I'm an affiliate for them, but I've known them forever. I use them uh, since before they even really launched the SEM Rush toolkit back when it was just SEO Quake, their like browser extension add on. Um, so I've known the SEM Rush crew for a long time. I know a lot of people over there, um, you know, email with people from there probably yeah. weekly. Um, but it's my go-to tool for, uh, cool. for, you know, for research, for keyword research, for, uh, you know, backlink analysis, um, you know, visibility analysis. I just did it today. I was on a call, a coaching call with someone. Um, and they were talking about one of their competitors. And I was like, hey, man, it actually looks like a really good time for you to, uh, uh, to, to invest in SEO because this competitor who you said is your main competitor, according to SEM rush, lost 50% of their search visibility in wow. April. And he's like, what? So I love SEM rush. It's a great tool. Yeah. I may direct people to your link. So I forgot to mention, so I don't get anything for this, but if you go to inspiredinsider.com slash SEM rush guru, you get a 30 day free trial with their guru account, which is no credit card required, by the way, typically $200 a month. And I don't get any I don't get any kickback on that at all. So I may just send them to John's because he's in, gets an affiliate commission and I don't. But, but uh, anyways, we'll link that up too. But John, so um, I want to talk about 
it's tough. A dual sided marketplace is tough. So you companies come in. So if you're a company out there looking to hire for digital marketing, you should check out get credo. If you are a digital marketing agency, you should check out get credo. So let's talk on the um, agency side of things. Um, yeah. There was a company you started working with in 2017. What happened? How did they use yeah. get credo and, and your, your master skills? Yeah, so this is this is one of my favorite one of my favorite stories. So as you said, Credo started in 2013. I started working on it full time in 2015. So I've been doing it full time for a little over five years. Worked with we've helped over 4,500 businesses in their I'd say in their journey to hiring. Not all of them have hired, but you know, good number have. Um, and then over 500 agencies in that time. And this one I I love because it's an agency that they uh, they got onto Credo early 2017, right? The founder was still running the business. He had a business partner, head of sales. They got on on an old model um, of Credo, which we were you know trialing and and uh, you know working. And that model kind of let us get to a point where we could invest back into growth. I could hire people and that sort of thing. Um, but they were doing about six hundred thousand dollars in revenue, annual revenue at the time, which you know for a team of a smallish team, that's not bad, you know. Um, but they wanted to grow. Um, and so, you know, over the years they brought it, you brought in a, the owner brought in a business partner and, um, long story short, that business partner in, has, in, has, uh, bought out the, the founder, um, by this point, but in early 2019, we hopped, we hopped on a call and he was like, look, like you guys are sending me awesome leads and they were closing with other agencies through Credo, but he's like, I'm not closing them. Like, can you, you know, can you help me out? And so I had been working on honing this kind of sales process over the years um, that I had used to sell multiple six figures. I think it was around 500K worth of my own consulting over a few years. And I was like, look, let me walk you through this. And so I walked him through our sale, through the sales process um, and, and tweaked something, changed some of their messaging, looked at their proposals, kind of looked at all this stuff. Um, and this year they're going to do about $4 million in revenue. Um, his, his close rates improved by like 25, 30%, something like that. And that's not just leads that we send them through Credo. That's all the inbound leads, all the leads that they were getting from other places as well. So it's had a huge impact, um, on their business. I actually teach that sales process on my YouTube channel. I teach it in our, uh, agency accelerator course. It's module four in there. Um, but, but, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a joy to me to work with. You mentioned that relationships drive your business. Relationships drive my business as well. Um, and it's been a real joy to be able to work with, with, uh, agencies like that who, you know, they want to invest in their own growth. They want to invest in their own learning and they want to do better and to really see, you know, their businesses just improve materially and substantially through the work that we've done together. You know, I, I love marketing. Marketing's super interesting to me. I was an SEO, like just an SEO for a really long time for, you know, quite a number of years. Um, but, you know, these days, man, I just love, I love building businesses and I love helping, you know, entrepreneurs succeed. Yeah. And John, so I want to talk about the sales process for a second because, you know, you have this great video and you talk, you, in this one video, you really honed in on follow-up. Mm. You want to talk mm. about your philosophy and follow up for a second? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to talk about follow up. So, uh, follow ups are a part of the sales process that too many people don't do. Too many people are scared. They're scared to follow up. Honestly, too many people are scared to be told no, right? So they don't actually take swings. I have a draft sitting in my uh, in the, on the the Credo blog um, that hasn't been published yet. But basically, my uh, the the title is the the agency growth manifesto: take more swings um, because too many people qualify out too many uh, clients that they could serve and deliver great value mm. for, but they're afraid. They're afraid to sign them. They're afraid to try to sign them because they're afraid of be, being told no. They're afraid to raise their prices because they're afraid of being told no. I'm tired of it. Um, but my, my thing with follow-ups is too many people don't do it. They toss, they take a proposal, right? And they don't even do the, the process leading up to the proposal, right? But then they put together this proposal. They spend all of this time. You know, I have some agency, I've had some agencies be like, we can't take any more leads right now because we have two big proposals. We have to get out in the two weeks. I'm like, how much time are you spending on these things? Like, that's insane to me. Um, right. That you can't talk to new prospects, like what? Um, but th they'll, you know, they'll send this proposal through in an email and end it with like, let me know what you think and then never follow up again. If you want to win in sales, like the, the money is made in the follow-ups, have a consistent follow-up cadence and follow up until you're told no, or until you put them into a longer uh, uh, sequence and then keep on following up. I say follow up every two days for the first week, then go to every three days for another week. Um, and then ask them if they're still interested in looking, it's called a spear email. If they yeah. say no, then take them out. If they don't respond, then follow up monthly just to check in. 
Um, if you're not doing follow-ups, you're losing it. I, what was that stat that I saw recently? If you're not doing follow-ups, it's like you're leaving. It was something like, I think the study said like 70 to 80, seven zero to eight zero percent of revenue on the table. Oh God. Totally that believe that. I would be like, I would think it's like 95%. It's like who, yeah, yeah. who on the first swing? It's like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> let me sign me up. It's like, no, 12 calls later, 17 emails later, three right. text message later. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it is easier to, it, there are ways to get to a quicker close where when you send through yeah. a proposal, you're like super, super confident that they're going to close, but you, you still have to follow up sometimes. I follow up with people right before we hopped on here, I was sending a follow-up email because someone is a new agency, excuse me, is coming on to Credo. Um, and I have to send them a follow-up to give them the information that they need to get going and introduce them to our, you know, our, our success person on the, on the pro side. If, yeah. if I didn't do that, then like we wouldn't make that, you know, that revenue, you know, every month until, you know, we upgrade them and start making more or, you know, or, or they, uh, they determine it's not working for them. Yeah. And those follow up when they buy, right. It's like, so they don't buy as more. So it's like the onboarding process. But you know, one thing you said that stuck out to me in that video that um, I love is you're like, you should be following up in less than five minutes. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. So if we're talking on the front end, so you're talking like initial lead follow-up. This yeah. is even proposal. Yeah. Follow yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I totally. mean, it's initial, all follow-up the whole, for the whole way, but yeah, I love what right, you said there. Right. Yeah. I mean with, on the lead follow-up side, too many people don't, they, they don't respond. They don't respond like at all. I mean, first of all, what everyone listening to this should go into their website, right? If you're generating leads through your website and things have been slow, go into your website and make sure notification emails are being sent to you. You would not believe I have, I have, I have one friend that was struggling. They were struggling. They were like, where did all my lead volume go? And they looked in their website and they had two months worth of leads sitting in there that their notific, their email notifications had stopped firing, got turned off somehow. Wow. Unbelievable. They thought they were going to have to go get a full-time job. Like it, it's unbelievable to me. And obviously that's an extreme case, but like that happens. It happens. Oh, it totally yeah. happens. Or it could be going to spam. So, it could be coming from a contact form and going to a spam box. Or exactly. Something. Exactly. So what I do is a couple of things. Number one, um, I, I get alerted. We get alerted about leads all over the place. Um, we, I get an email. My client success person gets an email. It goes into our, uh, into our CRM automatically using Zapier. Um, I used to get text messages about all of them. Now we have too many that my phone was just blowing up all day. I was like, all right, I got to move to, I got to move to like <laughs> qualified projects put in by my client success person. Right. Um, which I did, but like I get notifications, you know, um, uh, all over the place and that's all powered, almost all powered by Zapier. Our like initial email notifications are through gravity forms natively because we're built on WordPress. But other than that, I get those notifications and my client success person gets those notifications. Um, one pro tip, if you're just getting them, like, you know, someone's reaching out via email, um, you know, re respond that same day, like 100% respond that same day. You don't be sitting in your inbox, just like refreshing all the time. If you're using G suite, obviously like it, it'll show up in the, um, up in the tab, you know, if you got a new email, so you can go take a look at that. Um, but this is exactly why I started uh, getting a notification, like other notifications, you know, e uh, SMS, basically push notifications through Zapier again um, for free. You can have like 10 zaps for free or something like that. Right. Um, Zapier's so amazing. Set, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Zapier is amazing. So I set that up so I didn't have to be in my inbox, but as soon as a lead came in, I could go and, and, uh, you know, respond to them. Um, but one thing I love telling agencies or service businesses, um, or businesses doing, um, you know, lead generation at all doing demos is why make them submit their, like th this, uh, flow doesn't make sense to me, Jeremy. Someone submits an inquiry and they're put onto a, uh, a confirmation page that will reach out. There's no, there's no setting of like when you'll reach out or what you're looking at or anything like that. What we do is we have on our front form, some of what, what uh, my coach Dan Martell calls a funnel filter, where basically we have, I have a budget drop down that's required and I have a location drop down that's required because we only help, we can only help companies in, in certain countries. Um, and if they fill those out, right? I mean, it, it, it keeps people with like no budget from filling it out. So we don't waste our time on calls with them. Um, and then if they, if they fill that out, then they're actually dropped directly onto a page to schedule a call with my, with my vetting team. So we don't have to like go and look and are they qualified or not? We're qualifying them up front. Um, you know, too, so too many people are afraid to like add in things like that. Cause like, Oh, what if we lose out on a good lead? What you're actually going to find is you're going to have probably just as many leads, maybe a few, a few fewer, you know, quote unquote leads like form submits aren't qualified anyways, but the qualified ones are still going to come through. Yeah. So it's not going to be like, that, Oh, they're making me fill out these two, making these two questions. Yeah. Forget it. <laughs> like, yeah, they'll and, probably and just possible. fill them out. 
It yeah. is possible to get too long if they're like, why does this matter, right? We're not asking how many people are at your company, right? We're asking monthly marketing budget and location and then like regular contact information. Yep. You know, that's it. Um, I'm wondering, so from the software tool side of things, we mentioned mm-hmm. SEM Rush from SC, for SEO. You mentioned mm-hmm. Zapier. Uh, I interviewed Wade of Zapier. You could check out that interview too. I love too. Wade. Yep, I interviewed um, him years ago. Yeah. And Great. CRM. So I love some of the the tools and you don't have to say like there's probably a numerous tools you've heard are good so but any you know crm recommendations and you probably get these questions all the time like tools software yeah, you know yeah. what are some of the ones that, that you are your go-to well so and we've used a lot of different you know crms and esps you know email uh email software providers Email service providers. I don't mm-hmm. know, I forget what it stands for. Email services. Email. Over the years. I, I, yeah, I just yeah. go with email. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, started off on Mailchimp, went to Drip. Um, you know, CRM. We uh, at first it was a spreadsheet, um, and then we went to HubSpot's free CRM. Um, and then actually a year or so ago, we a uh, year and a half ago, uh, we basically uh, simplified all of our tools and we built an active campaign for about okay, the last cool. year and a half. I love them. They're they're they makes it makes so much sense from a pricing perspective. Um, and, uh, you know, you, it's CRM and marketing automation all in one, and you, you can have different automations based off behavioral clicks and all that sort of stuff. I tried to rig that up with drip and HubSpot CRM and Zapier and it just never worked like I, like I needed it to. So went to active, to active campaign and it's been, it's been phenomenal. I sound like a, like I'm, I'm you know, uh, advertising for, <laughs> but, but, no, but, I mean, but they're, they're a great tool. I mean, they, know, they, they, yeah. a little bit of like legacy code and such, and there's some like quirks and some bugs with like adding links and emails and that kind of thing. But like it gets the job done really, really well. It's easy for my team to use. You know, it's, I, I love it. Yeah. I mean, they're a Chicago based company. I, I had the mm-hmm. founder on, on the podcast cool. also, he's like a ninja in software, you know I mean? That's <laughs> what they do. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah. And they've been growing like crazy here in yep. Chicago. Um, yep. Yep. but thanks for sharing that. Um, and so, you know, the other thing is, um, you mentioned qualify out in, in, in the blog mm. post uh, that you, you're going to hit uh, send on during this interview um, or, or, or uh, publish, but um, qualify out. Are they qualifying out because they're scared of wasting time or why do you feel, and I say this from, from my experience too, like I, I probably do the exact same mistake you're about to uh, talk about. So why yeah. do people qualify out or what should they be looking at when they're qualifying? Yeah. So there's a few attitudes that I see when it comes to, um, to qualifying it. And let me also caveat this with, I do very much believe that you, that the riches are in the niches and that you should focus your, you know, your offerings, right? Like rise 25 does, you know, you do podcasts for people, right? You're not writing blog posts and white papers and that sort of thing. You're focusing on podcasts. So if someone comes to you and they say like, we need, um, you know, we need a, a white paper written. We need to partner with this company and get this white paper written. You're going to be like, no, you're not a fit. Right. But if someone comes to you and they say, Hey, you know, we've like, well, let, let me turn around the questions on you, Jeremy. Who's your <laughs> ideal like podcasting client? Yeah, actually I have that written down for you too. So I'm going to hear, I'm going to ask you, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's a business that has a higher client lifetime value, more B2B type of company. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that is focused on relationships. Yep. Yeah. What about, what about like, do you have like a certain number of episodes or downloads like, like that sort of thing that you look at for your ideal, like a, uh, you know, client? I mean, someone who wants to actually, you know, publish, uh, and we talk about this on a, you know, uh, a regular cadence. So it's not like, Hey, mm-hmm. I'm going to do like three episodes this year. Right. It's right. like, okay, I want to do one a week, um, ish and there's, there's a way to do it, but they really want to, um, you know, it's more based on relationships and giving the relationship. So why would you not want to get on the phone with 50 people this year that you should be anyways collaborating with, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, totally, totally. But so, so those are like, that's your kind of qualification criteria, right? And they have to be ready to invest in it monetarily and, you know, and those sorts of things, um, you know, and, and see it as like a clear path to being an acquisition channel, you know, for their business, um, you know, probably unless they're just like doing it for fun. Um, yeah. you, you talk about this actually in the SEL realm, which I love what you talk about is, listen, if you're a startup, you should not start doing, and maybe it's controversial, right? And maybe you disagree with you. Maybe I'm, this may be from five years ago or seven years ago, whenever I listened to it. But um, you're like, if you're a startup, like, do you really want to be spending your time on content writing and blog posting 
And it's a really long-term play when you need money now. I don't know if you would right. agree with that statement from your past self or not. I mean, I, uh, it all depends on who the founder is. Um, like I am a, uh, I'm a writer. I'm a writer yeah. as far as anything else. And so like blogging is how I built my career. It's how I built my company. Um, and so it still, you know, brings us a lot of traffic, brings us a lot of qualified leads. Yeah. Like, like, you so know, what you love that. doing, you um, love doing, yeah, that. it's what I love doing, but there are a lot of people that don't, right. That they I don't hate love it. doing it. Yeah, exactly. It's like pulling teeth, but you can do podcasts all day, you know? Um, and you know, but like I have moved over the last few months to, from blogging because I just wasn't doing much of it to doing videos, right? Cause I can record it. I can write the script. I can record a 10 minute video. I can edit it myself quickly, right? I do the video in one take and yeah, there's ums and uhs and that sort of stuff, but like, yeah, who cares? It, exactly. I publish the script along with it. I publish it on YouTube. I publish it on my blog and then I distribute it around the internet. Right. And that's content right there. Um, so I just think a lot of people waste a lot of time doing, you know, a lot of content or just like quote unquote SEO content, right? Like, yeah, we're writing 500 word blog posts. Who only wants to read a 500 word blog post, right? <laughs> like, yeah, it's SEO content. It's only meant for the search engines, not for users. Then why the heck are you publishing it? Right? Like, cause users are going to land there. Um, so anyways, that like that rant aside, um, the reason I, I see a lot of uh, agencies kind of qualifying out people. So like, say they do SEO, right? Or say like you have someone that you, say your offering is like, we're going to do a blog post every week, right? It's, or a, a podcast episode every week. It's four episodes a month. And that is your offering, right? Someone comes to you and they're like, you know, and say, let's say it's uh, uh, $4,000 a month, right? $1,000 an episode. Someone comes to you and they're like, we really want to hire you, but we only have $2,000. You have two choices there, Jeremy. You can either say, we, you're not ready to work with us. This is our offering, right? You need to double your budget. Or you can say, let's just do two, right? And maybe you negotiate a little bit back because there's still some like, you know, specific like costs and such that don't change. And you say, okay, well, for two, it's 2,500. And they're like, mm, okay, we can do that, right? But you, so you could have just told them no, or you can trim back your offering and, you know, and they can still afford it. Right. So having these, these different levels, um, is really, is really key. You know, I see too many agencies that they're like, if you're hiring us to be marketing agents, if you're hiring us to do, you know, SEO, this is the way that we work this is the only way that we will work. And these are the only prices that we will work within. Right. But like, say someone comes to you for an SEO audit and your usual SEO audit is five grand, right. For a certain kind of company. But you know, they don't have five grand, they have 2,500, for, but for five grand, you get, you know, X, Y, and Z and the whole kitchen sink. Can they just get X, Y, and Z for 2,500, right? You can do it. You can make basically a higher per hour. You can rock it out. They're not getting all those extras. They shouldn't get $5,000 of value for $2,500. Yeah. You don't have to discount, you you're saying you don't have to discount them. your services. You just trim the offering. And Negotiate on scope, it. not on price, Jeremy. That's Got what it. I've been, I've been beating cool. that drum for years. You have nice. to show them this is what you're getting for the price that you're paying. Because if you're not telling them, you know, if you're saying $5,000 for SEO services and they're like, well, we need it for $3,500 and all you've told them is SEO services, you can't take anything out. Your only choice there is to reduce your price or not sign them, right? Versus if you told them all the things they're getting, they're going to get eight blog posts a month and they can't pay for eight blog posts a month. Trim it back to five and you can get to their budget, right? They're not getting the results as fast and they know that but they also don't have the budget to get the results as fast as you know you could get, the, get it for them. Yeah, I love that. Advice: Negotiate on scope, not on price. That's negotiate on that's scope, not on price. Gold nugget. So yep. people listen to you on that, John. I hope so. Uh, I hope so. Let's talk levels for a second. Okay, you mentioned different yeah. levels. Let's talk about the levels because you released uh, a different level of Get Credo, mm -hmm. the digital yep. course. So talk about the different yep. levels of Get Credo. Yeah. So on Credo, what we did is, um, uh. We've been, we've had like our, we call it our pipeline as a service offering is what we call it now, where basically agencies pay us per month and we, every lead that comes in that we qualify, we assign a certain pipeline value to it based off of the budget they told us that they have. This is all based off of our historical data. So we have basically monthly subscription levels for certain amounts of pipeline. Um, and, and we, we do messages as like number of leads and pipeline, um, because you know, a lead, what the heck is a lead? It can be 20 bucks a month. It can be $20,000 a month. Those two should not be valued the same. But so we've had, but we can't serve everybody on that, right? Everybody that wants to be on that, we don't have the, the lead volume for all of them, right? Um, so we can't, so we had so many people that were just turning away and like, sorry, we can't help you. So agencies are like, John, I want to be on your platform. I want to mm -hmm. pay you. And I, of course they want leads, but 
Right. With, with a certain maybe type of agency or type of lead flow, you may be like, we're booked. We're, we're capped. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're capped. We, we literally can't, we can't bring you on. Um, but so what I realized was that I was doing some like with our pros kind of on those levels, I was doing some like basically private sales coaching. We do a monthly call and I would help. I would, I mean like that agency I told you about at the start and, uh, you know, had all these people coming to us. And over the years, I've kind of realized who our ideal customer is, um, on those, like on those levels. Um, but there are a lot that they're like, they're just getting started or they have some leads, but they don't, but their, their, uh, sales rates are abysmal, that sort of thing. I basically realized that like, you know, for someone that's brand new getting started, even if they can afford what we do and we have openings for them, they're not going to see success because they don't know how to close like, you know, one-on-one referrals from their best friend, not to mention like a cold (laughs) intro, you know, a a warm-ish qualified intro from a service like Credo. So what we did, so what what I did was a year ago, I started running a live accelerator. So I built out the like training modules, um, had a week for implementation, had a Q and a week at the end, but basically I taught them, uh, you know, going from zero to hero, building out your site, marketing, uh, you know, positioning and, uh, and messaging, uh, lead generation sales process, um, and then proposals, um, and so I ran that live a couple times. Uh, it was, you know, time intensive and energy intensive and all of that. Um, and I was thinking about running it again. And I was like, man, why don't we just like make this into an on-demand course? My business partner uh, also owns a, a WordPress membership, uh, uh, membership site development company. So I'm like, I can do the he, like, slapped you can you build up the tech. I, yeah, tell, well, he'd been telling me it for a while. And then finally, I just like took the time and, and recorded all of it. Also created a new module and we launched it two weeks ago. You know, and it's done, you know, uh, mid four figures in revenue in, you know, in under two weeks. Um, You know, I was like, why didn't we do this sooner? But basically what the thinking was, Jeremy, is like, what other needs do people have? Do people coming to us have, right? And if they're not ready to be on this level, how can we still serve them? Yeah. How can and it doesn't, it's have not them as a customer and also serve them and, and give them the value that they need for where they are. Yeah. And it, it coaches them up to use your other services. Also. Exactly. 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 Well, and of course, what we did is we also uh, gave our existing pros access. Hmm. <laughs> so I've talked about a lot of it with a lot of them, but now they can go back and they can access that, you know, that uh, uh, advice at, at any time. So the first level, then what's, the next level. For yeah, so we, we we have a level that we are um, that that we've been uh, trialing. Where basically we have so the the companies that we work with best that that we send to kind of our our you know pipeline pros is what we call them our our top best agencies that we work with really closely. Um, they those com- the companies looking to to hire basically have to be spending at least twenty five hundred a month in mark in, in marketing right. And if they're doing paid advertising, they need to have basically, they need to be doing, spending at least like five grand a month total in, in marketing um, to, to make sense working with a bigger agency. But there are a lot of companies that don't have that. Um, and so what we've done is we basically uh, worked out where we have a, a lower uh, uh, tier of vetted professionals, vetted agencies and such that, um, that basically on the agency side, they can, they can basically like, uh, you know, pay by the lead and say like, you know, I'm, I'm interested in this one. Um, but it's still going to a list of like pre-vetted pros. The person isn't having to go the, you know, the the client is having to go and kind of sort through them all. And, you know, all of that, they're contacted by, you know, three to four, usually I think five is the most, um, that we've had. Um, uh, so they're still getting like vetted pros that are, you know, part of a, part of a network. But, you know, once again, like they're not, you know, they're not spending, you know, 2,500, three grand plus a month, you know, like top, you, you, you can't afford a top agency, you know, like a, like a big, you know, full service agency that's worked with the Adobe's and New York times of the world. Um, so, you know, you, you, you get what you pay for. Um, so that's not saying they don't do great work, but like, you're not going to get that prestige, you know? Um, so basically what I, what we've really been thinking is like, how can we, you know, serve all the different levels, um, while still staying true to what we are, which is a, you know, vetted, uh, uh, vetted network, um, and, and helping, you know, agencies, helping both sides grow, um, but also, you know, really serving the kind of the, the digital marketing industry. So then the top tier is, mm-hmm do they pay like a monthly fee and then they get more direct access or? Yeah, exactly. So what we're doing there is they pay a monthly fee and there's, you know, there's three different levels on that. Um, and it's 
per amount of pipeline um, that we uh, that we schedule with them um, every month. So basically, lead comes in, my team qualifies them, gets them into the system, and then actually schedules that uh, that prospect with uh, with the agencies that are the right fit for them. So we find out times the prospect has available, and then we schedule them onto the agency's calendar on behalf of the client. That's so we're pretty getting, sweet. We're, we're getting these queued up. Yeah, and we just started doing that. This is another interesting story, Jeremy. We started doing that back in, we started testing it back in June. And because we've been having issues with like uh, on a, our past model, which is like a true marketplace slash escrow model of, you know, we, uh, uh, a prospect would come in, we'd talk with them, we'd qualify them and we'd match them up with agencies and they wouldn't schedule calls. And Why? it was just, it was multi, multiple reasons. Um, some of which we could affect and some of which we couldn't lack of case studies, that sort of thing. We can encourage it, but like requiring it, you know, we can't require it or they'll go and they'll look at the, they'd say it's an e-commerce company and we match them up with this agency that has done a ton of e-commerce work, but they don't have an e-commerce case study. You know, some people would be like, well, they don't have an e-commerce case study. So like, I don't trust you. And I'm like, okay. So what we've, what we've <laughs> done now, what we've done now is we try to keep them on credo as much as possible. Um, but we, uh, we, we actually go ahead and we, um, and we schedule them and show them that the agency has marked that like they do e-commerce work. Um, and we do have a place on their profile for like better, you know, case studies and such. Um, but we, that's why we, we shifted cause we could like, but basically Jeremy, my, my thinking was like, we could eke out some marginal gains, right? We could do a bunch of work, put a bunch of customer research and time into figuring out how do we move the, like the scheduled, you know, scheduled calls from like, let's say 70% of, of, uh, you know, of client scheduling calls to, to 75%. Mm-hmm. But is that going to make a meaningful like difference in our business? No. How do we, and so basically what I thought was, well, how do we make this not an issue of having to follow up with these people and like bug them to, to, uh, to schedule calls? Let's just do it for them. <laughs> so I just tested it when on one call, I was, I was on a call. I just thought about that literally that morning in the shower and was like, cool. Sounds good. Like, sounds like it's a great fit. You know, I, I can definitely get you connected up with some people, um, you know, through Credo that are qualified for you. I told him to spend how we do the matching. It was like, great. Can you give me a uh, uh, two, three, can you give me a block of time over each of the next three business days when you're free to have calls with agencies and I'll get you scheduled with them? And they're like, oh yeah, sure. Tomorrow, Wednesday, I have one to three and Thursday, I have 11 to one and Friday, I have 11 to one also and they can do after three. Great, sounds good. And I went and scheduled them and was like, oh, that was way too easy. <laughs> so Eliminating we just, the friction. We kept it going, exactly. Yeah. And honestly, agencies have been closing a lot more work because they're getting more at-bats. And some of these people that, that I know would have ghosted are signing with agencies and actually getting moving on their marketing yeah. because they got it because we got them out of their own way. Yeah. I mean, again, like people get busy. You're on the phone with them, you schedule it and mm-hmm. it's in their calendar and it's not like they didn't mean to follow up sometimes. It's just like people get busy with their normal life. Um, exactly. So what are you looking for in, on the agent? I'm going to, we'll go to the company side in a second, but what are you looking <laughs> for in the agency side in the tiers? Because obviously there's certain ones that are already blocked, you know, and, you know, people can't get in. What are, yeah. what are you looking for types of agencies, a good fit for the middle tier and the top tier right now? And this yeah, may change yeah. whenever you're listening to it, like five years from now, <laughs> you could still contact them because maybe there's sure. openings, but right sure. now in, in time. Yeah. So actually the way we do it, Jeremy, is, is all based off of um, whether we have the pipeline for the, so we obviously have a, like a, a specific profile and I'll explain that here in a second. Um, but the level that they're on is all dependent on, um, how much pipeline they want, but also that they're seeing success. Um, so any new agency that comes in, we start them on the bottom level. I have a new age, a couple new agencies coming in soon that I've started them on the bottom, uh, $1,300 a month, 75 K. They were like, how can we start on the top level, which is 375? I was like, no. And here's why because I want us to understand what it is that you're looking for. I want you to understand the leads that are coming through. And honestly, I don't want the stress of like, of, you know, you like being all up our backs about if like, you know, one of the first, you know, three (laughs) people that we schedule with you ghosts on you, right? Like you need to kind of understand how the system works and like it works for the right people. Um, and so, uh, so basically what we look for is like, it doesn't really make sense for solo consultants, uh, because they can't take on, you know, two, three new clients a month. It makes sense for agencies. So we focus on agencies, it makes sense for agencies that have, uh, we do have a couple agencies that are like three, four people, but our sweet spot is really agencies that are like eight plus people. Um, our biggest agencies, our most successful agencies sign the most work are like 30 to 40 people. Um, and they've learned how to scale, but they're also like that because they offer multiple services. 
Um, but I love working with agencies that are like eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 people. Cause 10, 12 people is about when the agency owner stops doing all the sales themselves, hires a sales development rep to qualify and all those sorts of things. And that's really the fun part of like a business growth, um, you know, for me. And then we can, you know, we can see them grow to like 20, 25, 30 people and they kind of grow up, you know, through the ranks and we all, you know, kind of grow up together. Yeah, cool. And um, I will talk on the company side, but if people, if there's agencies listening and they're interested, should we send them just to getcreator.com or a certain page they should check go out? To, go to getcreator.com slash pros, P-R-O-S. Um, it is linked up in the top right of the site and kind of a sub nav. Um, we're hopefully going to be making it more obvious soon because I'm tired of, cool. people, of getting emails from people asking how Where do I join Credo? Yeah, exactly. Cool. That's a good, good message to get though. Yeah. Um, on the company side, John, so it, it's tough. Like a dual marketplace is not easy, right? You have to get the companies and then, or the, the agencies and then the companies coming in who are looking for work. So on the company side, um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if we talk about the, the hired dribble example and, and relationships in general. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can, we can definitely talk about that. I mean, though you're absolutely right that, I mean, a two-sided business is so hard. Um, people, when I was starting off, uh, a mentor gave me uh, one piece of advice and he said, uh, he said, there are two things that you should not do. You should not start a marketplace and you should not start a marketplace alone. <laughs> Guess who did both? I'm a slow learner. Very um, good. But you know, we're not we're not a marketplace. We're a productized service, but we are a two sided business. Um, and I was fortunate um, because I started this business in a space that I've been in for a while that I have a good name in. So, and I already had people coming to me wanting me to consult with them. So I actually started Credo. I, its first iteration was called Hire Gun, H I R E G U N. I rebranded uh, January 2016, so like three four months after um, I started uh, working on it full time. Um, why did you rebrand? I got a cease and desist letter. Oh, okay, I'm like, I like hired gun. <laughs> yeah. I know hired gun was it was hired gun. It was it was you know it it uh, it made sense for what we're doing. Um, but there's there's a marketing agency in New York City um, that uh, has a similar name that had the, had the trademark. Um, so I didn't realize you know that I was doing it. You know, it was completely like naive of me. But rebranded and kept on going. You know, it was early okay. enough that like it was pretty easy. You know, kind of like uh, buy a new domain, throw and redirect everything, search and replace in the database, and you're good to go. Uh, you know, get new get new social media handles. Um, but uh, so it wasn't that. It was just finding finding the name was the hardest part. Um, but I uh, uh, I was fortunate to I was able to hack. So two sided businesses that succeed have an unfair advantage on one side or the other. So I had an unfair advantage, honestly, on both sides um, because I was already known as an SEO, as a digital marketing leader. So I had people wanting to work with me. I was not able to take them on as clients. I was like, but I can find you someone who's good, right? And so I started doing it that way and making just slinging introductions by email. And then I also was well known in the space, right? So I was well known on that side and had agencies that were looking for clients as well. So I was really able to kind of hack the supply and the demand side. People always ask me like, which one is more important at the start? Uh, Demand, honestly, to start because you're literally selling like on the supply side, you're literally selling the money. Um, But then eventually you do have to have enough supply and enough varied supply to satisfy all the demand coming in. So it really is a balancing act. But now, and at the end of the day, it's all about the demand side, right? If we can get more people coming in that are looking to hire and looking to hire for the kinds of things that our network does, we're going, we're going to win. So talk about hired a company yeah. or I don't know if you start with hired or dribble or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah, all the, all the companies are, are, uh, you know, they're, they're important and not important at the same time. So yeah, we have some logos, you know, on our site talking about, um, you know, the different companies that, you know, our network has worked with and, um, they, you know, hired is one of them that came through, you know, years ago, um, that, you know, they are a, uh, they're a service for helping companies hire vetted full-time people. Right. I think they're focused on like development and design, something like yeah, that. Yeah. A lot um, of, dev- I, I, when I looked a while ago, it was a lot of development people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I haven't heard much from them recently, but, um, this is like marketing on the internet, but basically at the time their um, their head of growth, uh, who has now gone on to be CEO of Dribble, Zach, he's a phenomenal guy. He worked, uh, he had also been at Creative Market, um, which is like a, a design assets marketplace. Um, and so basically 
I worked with follow me here and this is all about how relationships can drive, can drive business. Right? So I, I was contacted by hired uh, that they were looking for an SEO agency. They contacted me looking to work with me. I wasn't the right fix. They needed services done. So I connected them up with uh, with an agency, right? That agency did phenomenal work for them. Then Zach, uh, no, actually. So I started working with creative market as an SEO consultant in 2016. Zach had been their head of growth when he left, uh, their, his second in command became the head of growth. So Paul, Paul, th I worked with, with them and then I met Zach in person in San Francisco right before I moved from there in 2016. Um, and then Zach was at hired and he, uh, and then they hired an agency, hired, hired an agency through Credo. And then Zach moved on to dribble. And then I worked with dribble as an SEO consultant in 2018. Um, and then now the head of growth at creative market lives in Denver um, and I just got a text message from him today about a position that they're hiring. Um, and he's, he's become a friend of mine. We go mountain biking together. Nice. So like, you know, investing in these relationships and being like, you know, being, being good to good people is what I, is what I like to say. Um, and I've been reading some really interesting, like, um, you know, things about, you know, growth and success in business and life and that sort of thing. Um, and read an interesting one recently, which is all referring to, uh, uh Parado's principle, which is you get 80% of the results from 20% of the input, right? I like to look at what's the 20% of relationships that I'm getting the most from, right? And not in like a taker selfish way, but just like, um, you know, uh, uh, fun and learning and inspiration and all of those things. Right. And hopefully they consider, you know, me part of their 20% as well, but like, those are the relationships that I'm going to invest, you know, um, in on right there. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I love, I try and think about that on a daily basis, maybe even every couple hour basis um, of the 80, 20, everything's 80, 20, John, you know, like everything. Oh, yeah. And and like, I love what you said, like with the 20%, it's not like a, it's not like a taking mentality. It's, it could be the opposite. It's like, who are the biggest givers in my network that I want to give to? Right. Because it's just reciprocity, like just circles around. Like yeah. I give to them, yeah. they give back. And those are the type of people I want in my universe who are the biggest givers, heartfelt, you know, they're just, you know, heart centered people. You know, exactly, exactly. And it's funny to me how, when you look at Parado's principle and you look, once you know it, that you get 80% of the results from 20% of the input, then you start looking at your business and your personal life and your finances and all of those things. And it just a whole sure across the board, man. It's insane. Do you get John companies, you know, cause they're bigger companies. They can be, um, the in-house argument versus hire an agency argument, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And yep. are you, I mean, obviously I know your stance on this, you know, um, I, you know, in most cases, not in all cases, but, um, when you're, when someone's like, Hey, you know, John, we're just, we're thinking about bringing this, this in house. Mm -hmm. What, and again, there's varying, you know, things that could happen here, but let's yep. say it's one that you say it's something you'd recommend them not doing. Mm -hmm. How do you explain to them why they'd be making a mistake or they shouldn't do it? Well, this is why I have a video about in-house first agency on my YouTube <laughs> channel. I recorded that a few weeks ago. It was super popular. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, it is, it is something that we hear quite a bit. People, you know, they're thinking through which one they do. So I created that resource for them. Um, but basically what I tell people is, I mean, there, there's a few things um, to think about, but also, and I'll get into those in a second, but also what I've learned is it's not my job to convince them one way or another. Cause they're going to do what they're going to do. And if they're looking if they're ready, they've determined that they need to hire an agency and that is the right fit. Then we're going to, we're going to connect them. Right. But if they're like, they're looking to be convinced one way or another 80, 20, you know, that's not like, that's not where, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to live. I will consult with them. We have some paid consultations. I'll hop on a call with them and talk with them one-on-one -on -one about it. Right. Like that's fine, but you're not going to get that, you know, that advice, you know, one-on-one -on -one live advice for free. Um, but I, th there are companies that they need to hire agencies. There's companies that need to hire full time and there are companies that need to do both. And the most successful companies end up doing both because you have to have a leader internally. So you need to think about who is going to be managing the agency. So the guy today that was considered hiring like four different agencies. And I was like, tell me about your team. He's like, I don't have any marketing support. I was like, he's like, but I also don't want to pay for account managers. I was like, so you're the account manager, <laughs> um, right? Like you, you have to recognize that like someone's gonna be the account manager either you pay for it or you are it. Um, 
so there needs to be a leader, you know, internally, someone directing the strategy. Um, and so if you don't have that, then either hire a consultant to be directing that strategy, but also recognize that consultants are not doing all the services. They're not going to run all your SEO. They're not going to write the content and do the tech SEO and do the PPC and the Facebook ads and all that stuff. They might do a little bit of it, one of them, but otherwise they're going to need help from your own internal team or, you know, outside teams. Um, but, uh, so, so usually it comes down to, do they have a strategy set? Do they have someone internally that's going to be leading it? Um, or like a founder that knows marketing, um, do they have someone that, that knows it, um, you know, internally? Um, and if they do, then even if it's the founder, like an agency can absolutely be the right, you know, be the right, uh, need. Otherwise, like it is, you do need to have someone kind of steering the ship, captaining the ship, um, for, on, on the, on the marketing side. Um, the other thing that I will say is that, uh, there are, if it, the kind of, uh, the hire that you need also depends on whether you need strategy or services or both. Right. And I just released a video yesterday. So October 20, what's today? The 27th. So on the 26th, I released a, a video talking about the differences between freelancers, consultants and agency and agencies. Um, I see, I get people that they, they're like, we're looking to hire in house and we need them to do all of these channels and we don't have budget to work with agencies. I'm like, wow, like, you know, good luck. Like that's a unicorn that also you can't afford. Um, so, uh, you know, if you need services, either hire a bunch of freelancers or hire an agency, right? And it all depends on how centralized you want and need the strategy to be. And often people will hire a bunch of freelancers and then eventually graduate to an agency. If you need strategy and maybe one channel like focused on, but then also to direct like the rest of the strategy and work with internal teams and such, a consultant can be a good fit. But once again, they're not doing full services like an agency is doing. So each one is better depending on what your need is. Um, yeah. So I can't give a blanket like, you know, Hire in house first and then hire an agency. <laughs> yeah, there's I, so I many, nuance. clean it. so not, many like, nuances. But it's some of the, yeah. the question. I mean, the, the value is in the questions you need to be asking yourself to come to an answer, right? And so yeah. um, I have one last question, John. First of all, thank you. Everyone can check out getcredo.com. Um, and before I ask, uh, I want to know if we left anything out from the Get Credo story and your story. I mean, there's so much. I mean, you have such a breadth of experience that I didn't get to ask, like SEO, you were in book publishing, you worked at Distilled, Zillow, Trulia, mm -hmm. all these experiences mm -hmm. lead to what you do now. Yeah. Um, but um, I, want, I have a t-shirt idea for you. I think in okay. book titles <laughs> and t-shirts yep. for some reason. Okay. And like, you need to start sending people, you are the account manager t-shirt or something <laughs> like that. Like, no. I love it. I love it. Or like not the account manager. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm um, not the depending on where the conversation funny. goes, That's but, right. um, check out getcredo.com. check out other episodes. Um, what have we left out that would be important? You know, maybe it was a lesson you learned at, at distilled or book publishing or from the get credo story. Um, that would be the good to kind of bring the conversation together at the end. Oh man, you're putting me, put me yeah. on the spot here. So I, I mean, think one, yeah, <laughs> it's all good. I think one of the things that I've like, that's kind of been a theme through my life is, and we've already mentioned it already is 100% relationships and just keeping in touch with good people that have, you know, added a lot of value to, to your life. Um, you know, I still email. So I, I lived when I was uh, working in book publishing, I was living in, a commune in Switzerland, um, in a tiny little dairy village. Um, I had hair down below my shoulders. I was, I was a true hippie. Um, I'm gonna link that. And up. the the co-founder or the the founder of the of the publishing company I was working alongside. I'd met his wife there in the 70s. He's American. She's French. They had a chalet there in the village. Um, but my uh, my mentor when I was there um, in Switzerland, he was the director of the community at the time. I emailed with him yesterday. I haven't lived there since 2010. <laughs> it's been 10 years. I've gone back and visited four or five times, but like, and you know, I always like meet up with it when he's there. We always, you know, like meet up and catch up and turns into like a two, three hour catch up. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I keep good people in my orbit. Um, I purposefully like, you know, I, I communicate with them, you know, wherever Instagram or Facebook or SMS or email or whatever, just keeping those, you know, keeping those people in your orbit. I really believe that, um, you know, your network is your net worth. Um, like who, you know, is going to drive, is going to drive things. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, it's not like a, you know, a specific story, but like, you know, relationships that I've gained through 
living in Switzerland through, um, uh, you know, working at Distilled and I met phenomenal people. Like, I mean, the best of the best in the digital marketing industry, a lot of whom I still consider friends, right? Kept in touch with them from those days. And I left there in 2013. Same with Zillow, right? I'm still in contact with, you know, the, the, a lot of the execs that were there when I was there, you know, like founding team members, um, you know, just keeping these good people, you know, in your, in your orbit is one of the best things that you can do for yourself uh, career wise and for your business if you're an entrepreneur. Check it out. Go to getcredo.com. John, thank you. Jeremy, my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.